Cannabis Investing Newsletter. Welcome to my channel. Today we're looking at a different type of company and we're going to take a different approach to what I normally do here on my newsletter. Normally I look at and break down revenues, margins, costs, earnings of a particular company and I try to give a forward projection as to what a stock could be worth based upon its fundamentals. Uh, I don't look at charts per se and sit there and draw lines and say because this pattern happened before it's going to happen again. Fun, uh, technical analysis doesn't, doesn't hold much sway with me. So my approach is purely on a fundamental basis, but today we're doing something a little different just because of the type of company we're looking at. Today, Neptune Wellness Solutions. NEPT is a symbol. The difference here is they've done a major reset, and because of that, all the previous revenue is no longer valid moving forward looking at what the company could do. So we're going to we're going to break things down a little differently. We're going to put up based on what they're projecting, we're going to put up a model scenario of what a company could do, not necessarily Neptune, but what a company could do based on the metrics they have available. Then that gives us a baseline as to what we could consider possible with Neptune Wellness. We're referring entirely upon their financial data their news statements, uh, earnings release that they just put out, things of that nature. My name is D.H. Taylor. I'm a top-rated analyst. Uh, I'm recognized throughout the industry. I contribute content throughout the industry. Uh, many publications accept my, uh, my, my articles for contribution and things like that. But right now, I'm going alone right here on my own with Cannabis Investing Newsletter. What I do is I'm looking at 350 different companies. I break each of these down, looking at all the revenues, looking at the revenue growths. I look at their margins. Who's got the best gross margins? Who's got the best cost metrics? Who's earning the most margins over cost? What are their ratios for, say, uh, leverage or uh, debt versus revenue and cash, things of these nature. I break this down and by looking at 350 different companies, I'm able to give you guys a, a sound picture as to what is the potential for any one company based on how they rank. Now, this doesn't necessarily drive too well with some people that get involved in, a, in, in one of these major companies, say Aurora Cannabis, Canopy Growth, Tilray, whomever, and they'll sit there and say, you know, I think it's going to the moon. Okay, great. Based on what metric and your thoughts of, I think it's going to the moon because cannabis is booming, there's nothing substantial enough in there for someone to come in and say, I'm going to put my hard-earned money into this stock simply because of that. But when you break down these stocks, you're able to see what potential actually exists. A lot of these cannabis stocks, they were pushed way out of line from fundamentals based on um, uh, the Reddit surge we had back in February. So now we're starting to see some valuations come back into line as to what might be possible. From here, cannabis has given us the opportunity to invest in uh, these stocks. This is a once in a generational opportunity. If you like my content, please, by all means, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, whatever it is right here on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Facebook's starting to surge huge for me. Uh, I've been running this for about 10 days. I've been in the industry for over 30 years. Um, I've only been doing this website, like I said, for about 10 days. So there's constantly content, content going up on the uh, my YouTube channel, up on my website. I have a free email newsletter. Please, by all means, subscribe to that. You're going to get this content delivered to you for free in your email box. I also have premium content. One-year subscription, 40 bucks. You get to see my top picks. I put in there where exactly my buy and sell orders are based on my analysis for those companies. Uh, that $40 gets you a one-year subscription with full access to my premium content. I try to update that on a regular basis. We are still on pause waiting for annual reports to come out on a slew of company. I think I had about six companies pop up today. 
saying that uh, they've reported finally so we can move forward for that. Neptune Wellness, NEPT, the stock, not in my portfolio. Not sure if I'm going to move it in. Um, I've got a fairly sizable portfolio that I'm looking at. Nonetheless, I see this as a solid opportunity. And when I build this picture for you, this sort of baseline picture, you can look at this company and probably see the same value and the same opportunities I see. Nonetheless, um, the recent Reddit surge, uh, as someone said, guys sitting in their mom's basement decide to push stocks prices up too high. Um, sure. I don't know what they were targeting this particular time. Certainly GameStop had its uh, had its opportunity with all the short traders. No one's really short on the same basis as as with cannabis stock as they were with GameStop. Since that move by Reddit traders, Neptune itself has dropped considerably and is now below the mark where that took off. It took off from about 160. Um, I could potentially see one dollar print over the course of the next couple weeks or so. Uh, timing, I think, is going to be important on this particular stock. We're still seeing some selling, but I think um, most of the major stocks in the cannabis industry are going to continue to move down. I've, I've evaluated Aurora, Tilray, things like that. I see Tilray with an opportunity coming up in a few months. Uh, Canopy and Aurora, not as much. I want to show you the picture of what Neptune Wellness quarterly revenues looks like. Now, they were printing some baseline numbers, 7 million, 6.5, 8.5. Then they surged up to the 21.5. They were basically, from what I could gather from their information, dumping inventory. Now they've retooled and are going towards a different business model. Uh, they will continue to do this. They are making significant progress. If you've heard the transcripts, I listened to them the other day. Uh, if you've heard these transcripts, there's a lot of information in there moving forward. And these are the things that I really wanted to focus on. Specifically, there are two things. I wanted to bring up the Sprout Baby Food Purchase. And I also wanted to point out the $100 million purchase orders that the company announced. First, we're going to talk about Sprout Baby Purchase, uh, the baby food company. And then we'll get into the purchase orders. I don't know too many cannabis companies that are sitting around saying, you know what we need to do? We need to go buy a baby food company. My thinking is someone, person A, knew person B. And because of that, this deal happened. I'm not saying it's a bad deal. I'm not necessarily saying it's a good deal. The company's telling me there's synergies, there's going to be some cost savings. Okay, great. I could get a board owning an organic baby food product. Um, I don't know personally what the synergies are going to be that overlap with a cannabis company and an organic baby food supplier. And those aren't things that I'm really focused on either. There's something entirely different that when I sit there and I ponder this, I think there's an opportunity there. First off, there's it's Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley, the um, enter, their their capital division, you have this individual, Lincoln Isetta. And I don't know if I pronounced that correctly or not. My apologies to uh, Mr. Lincoln Isetta if I if I did botch that name. Here's the thing. He is a managing director with Morgan Stan Stanley's uh, division there. He's out in San Francisco. The deal of the terms was that 50.1% of the shares of this company, uh, Sprout Baby Foods, would be purchased by Neptune Wellness. This also put Lincoln Isetta on the board of directors for Neptune. 
Sprout has some $28 million in annual revenue. <clears throat> if we take a baseline company producing $28 million a year in annual revenue, and we take a baseline average net earnings, we are able to break down what the valuation could be worth on a forward basis for this company. I'm not talking about what was actually paid for this, uh, the baby food company, but I'm looking at a baseline probability as to what this stock could be worth just by owning this company. I'm going to look at that in a second. I want to come back to Mr. Isetta. He's now on the board of directors for Neptune. Morgan Stanley, this portfolio that's being managed by uh, Mr. Lincoln Isetta, still retains 49.9%. So it's basically a 50-50 split. But think for a second, this individual's connectivity how many people he may know. They've brought Sprout Baby Food from its beginnings up to a $28 million in revenue. And then, of course, Neptune pops in and they pick up 50% of it, slightly more than 50%. So you're now putting someone from Morgan Stanley on the board of directors of Neptune. I see that as a huge opportunity to make sure that this company, Neptune Wellness, succeeds along with Sprout, which of course Sprout at this point has been successful. They have been growing their revenues and earnings. It's not a publicly traded company, so we don't have 100% of the information on that. Too bad. Nonetheless, I looked at this deal and I, you know, I had, I don't know how many messages come in. Somebody said they bought a baby food company and I still kind of shake my head. But when I look at Okay, now we have this individual on the board of directors. I think that's a good thing. Okay, let's break down their revenue. Let's say they are making $28 million annual revenue, which they've reported that uh, via Neptune's earnings. Um, the average revenues, net earnings for the S&P 500 is 14%. So this means that $1.964 million goes to Neptune in earnings based on $28 million in annual revenues at 14% net earnings on average. That's the S&P 500. I don't know where organic baby food fits into that model. Are they above average, below average? We don't even really know if the organic baby company is break even, slightly profitable, slightly unprofitable. Nonetheless, if it was a baseline average company, they would be printing about $1.964 million that Neptune effectively would be earning via this. That is 0 0.0165 cents per share. The average S&P 500 multiple right now is 34.5 times EPS forward earnings. So if they did earn $28 million in the next year and did earn... Uh, which would, would be about 3.8 million total. Um, the stock value from this alone would be worth about 58 cents. So we can add this on a baseline basis to Neptune's sort of bottom line. The other thing I want to point out is Neptune's book value at this point is 77 cents. So that brings the total up to about a buck 20, buck 25, somewhere in there. However, from an asset point of view, Neptune is already claiming the 57 cents EPS with their book value. So um, I look at this 57 cents, 58 cents as sort of the bottom of where things could possibly bottom out what is the worst case scenario if this stock hit 57 cents i think it would be a buy all day long simply because of the organic baby food but they are going to continue to contribute revenue to the company the other thing i wanted to point out neptune wellness aside from the sprout baby food purchase adding morgan stanley uh, 
culture to the board of directors, they have reported $100 million in purchase orders from six different companies. Didn't really go too far into detail on that. On my website, I have done a, a write-up on this company, and there is a link to the PR Newswire where you can you can read it. it wasn't chock full of details. Nonetheless, I wanted to look at that hundred million purchase order and use that as the baseline as to what could possibly revenue generation and earnings generation from the, those purchase orders. They've got about three main product categories. They've got the Jane Goodall, Wonders of Africa, some sinkatures and oils, and uh, Neptune Wellness, sort of home products that are geared towards um, holistic home products versus you know your basic poisons that some of the other companies are putting out there. Mood Ring is their CBD slash THC product line. There's three, two, I saw two CBDs and one THC up on their website. So those are the three products. But let's break down what $100 million in revenue could be as a baseline so that this can help us determine what Neptune Wellness could be over the next 12 months. All right, $100 million in annual revenue. Again, we go back to the S and P 500. Average re revenues are about 14, or net earnings are about 14 percent of those revenues. So that's 14 million dollars going to Neptune. All right, there's 119 million shares of Neptune stock at NEPT outstanding. Divide the 14 by the 119, you get 11.8 cents per share. This is a cannabis company. 34.5%, those are for some slow growth S&P 500 companies. The average increase of the S&P 500 revenues year over year for the 500 companies in the S&P 500 is about 3.3%. There aren't too many cannabis companies that aren't printing, say, 10, 15, 20% year over year revenue growths. So therefore, we need to increase our forward earnings multiple from 34.5. I'm using 50 here. I've seen people shoot for 60, 80, 100 times multiple. So if we take that 50 times EPS of basically 12 cents, this puts Neptune stock at $5.88 on a forward basis. But there's caveats to that. First off, Neptune has to hit that baseline. They've gotten purchase orders for $100 million. They've also stated that they've had distribution issues because of COVID. So although they've gotten orders for $100 million, that does not necessarily equate to, over the next 12 months, $100 million worth of product being distributed. I'm believing that the we are getting closer and closer to some kind of resolution on the basic COVID virus that we have. I'm a little leery about the South African version of this. So I don't know how this plays into the future, but the numbers we're seeing here in the United States and some other places, we're seeing drastic declines in COVID cases, new cases and things like this. It looks like a good chunk of the United States of America is going to be immunized um, before the summer. And I believe Canada is on par with those numbers. This, of course, assumes that the South African variant, it doesn't get crazy. Uh, that's up in the air. Nonetheless, should the world start shifting out of a COVID environment, it is possible that they can hit 100 million in baseline revenue. This creates 14% net revenues. The caveat is, do they hit that 100 million? If they do, and they also contain their costs and are able to hit margins, then you're looking at 14 million earnings total, which amount to about 12 cents per share. Now, 
the CEO, Mr. Camarati, Camarada, he's got a lot of experience over the past, I want to say, seven years time. I think it was about 2015 that he ventured out and created two other companies, one a venture company and another one a, a sort of a holistic company, very much in line with Neptune. So he's got a baseline experience. He knows the market. He knows how to operate within this type of product line. The fact that they have Jane Goodall as um, a product line, I think that's massive. Um, she's got a stellar reputation. You've got to know that anything she that, that her name gets lent to is going to be a, a very high quality. Um, I've, I've kind of read through the website as to how that all breaks down they're using oil straight out of those regions and those regions it improves the economic standing of the in those areas which of course translates into better conditions for the animals that miss goodall would have been studying throughout her whole life with the sprout acquisition and this baseline of 100 it is very possible that NEPT, NEPT stock hits within, say, 12-month period of time, $6.46 per share. That projection, of course, looks at this baseline opportunity of $100 million in revenue up front. I'm leaning on the fact that uh, the CEO and management in general, they have enough of experience, they can contain their costs, and that they fulfill that 100 million over the course of the next 12, if not 18 months. Given that, I think, in fact, some of the experience and the opportunity, given the fact that this is a CBD product, it may very well do outperform these me metrics. We might see $7.50. We might see $12.50 in, say, 18 months' time. When you look at the price of the stock today, trading at a buck fifty, I see a lot of opportunity. I see a lot of opportunity that I don't think the market is acknowledging right now at this price. We had some lows back uh, about a year ago, March of last year, all the way down to one dollar. These were cannabis low periods of time. Uh, a lot of the lows happened again in October. Um, <clears throat> If we were to see $1 a share, I don't see how getting into that stock would have too much downside simply because of the Sprout acquisition and future projections of revenues. When I compare these, all these companies, I'm looking at 350 different companies. When I break them down, when I show all the, you know, comparing company A versus company B, I'm able to see things that uh, you can't see if you're just looking at one stock. And I'm, I'm going to be constantly putting this information up here on my uh, YouTube channel. Sign up for the email newsletter. Um, sign up for, uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit me up on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you want. Uh, again, for those who are interested to, to see my top picks, a premium subscription, $40.00. Um, full access, one year. I'm updating my email newsletter updates almost every day. This I'm trying to update on a weekly basis, trying to target what stocks to pick up. We're waiting on some annual reports. I've got about 12 stocks in there. So listen, cannabis investing right now, once in a generational opportunity. Certain stocks are going to take off. But your name brand stocks are not going to cut it. Canopy growth. I don't see much growth in that stock or that company for at least a solid 12 months. Afria, uh, they're being acquired or merging with Tilray. I am kind of turning a torn corner on Tilray. Afria, I'm kind of leaning back a little bit. I want to do next week, I want to do a combined look at what they're company could do. They're telling us there's about $4 million in synergies and cost savings over 24 months period of time. I want to see revenue go for those companies. But when you look at these big name brand companies, they simply don't 
have the growth potential of some of these smaller companies. I'm looking at every single one of them. Take advantage of this now. My name is D.H. Taylor. This is Cannabis Investing Newsletter. Thanks for stopping by. Best of luck to you out there.